Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning, whether you're joining us in person in the room or whether you're not, you're joining us via the internet on Zoom. We're delighted that you're here. If you are joining us via Zoom, if you would go on ahead and mute, that would be super helpful. We also appreciate your understanding and grace when there's a hiccup doing a during the realities of a hybrid worship service, because that does happen. And who is our usher today? Oh, Mr. Lynn. So kids, if you would be sure and see Mr. Lynn, and he has a special bulletin for you, and then show him that bulletin after worship, and he will have something for you then as well. During the first hymn, please send me your prayer requests. Also, the quilts that are on the back of our chairs here in our sanctuary, those will be going to Lutheran World Relief in just a few weeks. And so there is an unknown recipient of that quilt. And as you lean back against it, we ask that you just say a blessing to the person who will re be receiving that quilt. I have the crud. <clears throat> I tested negative for COVID, but it, as uh, being uber cautious, I'm wearing a mask. <clears throat> and I was going to say, don't hug me today, but I've already gotten a buzz to hug. So I'm going to rephrase that to say, hug me at your own risk. <laughs> because I am really grateful for all the hugs and I can use a whole lot of them. Would you please stand for our confession and forgiveness? <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> if we're gonna close our eyes, eyes to the things we do and, and the things, things we Oh
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
us pray together. Oh God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us. We eat and are satisfied. Fill us and this world in all its need with your life that comes from you, Jesus, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Matthew 14, chapters 13 through 21. Now when Jesus heard this, excuse me, <clears throat> he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and gave them and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over from the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. Word of God, words of life. Thanks be to God. Back sometime in the spring, Leanne Cherry said, I'm going to this fundraiser called, called The Big Table, and I would like for you to be my guest and to come to this event. And I said, well, okay. Sounds, and she said it includes breakfast. And I'm like, well, I'm in. Um, so um, it turns out she couldn't actually go. So Paige was kind of my host for this event. And so I heard Jen speak and several others. And the council had already decided to use for our summer series the least of these. And I thought, oh, this is perfect. And so I had a conversation with Jen and said, would you be willing to come to our church and speak and tell about the wonderful things Big Table is doing? So then when everything that happened this month happened, Leanne called me and said, what can I do to be helpful? And I said, get a hold of Jen, that person from the big table, and see if she will come and speak at Peace Lutheran Church. And so Leanne did that. And today, Jen is here. So before Jen comes to speak, though, she has asked that we watch a video. So we're going to watch this video. And then, Jen, as soon as it's done, we're delighted that you're here. Please just come up and share with us the wonderful things the big table is doing. Is it the big table or the table? We call it big table. The IRS makes it the big table. Oh, okay. <laughs> the big table. <laughs> okay. So just use the videos over. The floor is yours. Big table exists to care for those in crisis that work in the restaurant and hospitality industry. It is the one industry with the highest rates of poverty of any industry in our nation. It's also the largest industry, uh, by some counts, in our nation. Those in the restaurant hospitality industry, uh, behind their smiles, were more vulnerable than any group that I'd noticed in the community. Uh, high levels of stress, high levels of brokenness, folks that were struggling with addiction, that were almost uh, to be evicted from their homes, that 
had children that they couldn't take care of because of the hours that they were working at night. Um, lots of single parent homes, immigrants, people new to the country, people coming out of incarceration. So you end up with this collection of folks who thankfully have a way to have a job because there's a low barrier of entry to get a job in this industry if you're physically able, but you're coming into it with some issues already. So whether it would be housing stability, which might be a rent issue or food scarcity, uh, mental health, medical, dental, addiction issues, as well as what we refer to as job readiness, which would be transportation, maybe a cell phone bill they can't pay. So we, we have sort of these overarching impact areas where we try to build capacity for each of the folks who's referred to us, helping with an immediate need gives us the opportunity because we're building trust to enter in and be part of kind of their problem solving. But what that actually does is it changes a family, it changes a workplace, it changes a community because all of a sudden somebody's stabilized and that stabilization has a ripple effect. Having crisis happen has a ripple effect too. Um, but what's beautiful about Big Table is we're trying to have the ripple effect be positive. And it really does change the workplace as well because there's an enthusiasm when you start to see people getting helped. I have just found that the understanding that Big Table has for our team workers and the level of empathy that they have is, is profound. Uh, in, in my 25 years plus in the industry, I've never worked with an organization that has been so focused on helping the people that we work with on a daily basis. So Big Table got its name because we actually have a 45 foot long table that seats 48 people. And a few times a year, we have what's referred to as an industry dinner. That's the most visible part of what we do is these dinners that take place in each city where the guests at the table are folks that work in the industry, all together around a table where people get to experience community around a phenomenal meal cooked by an amazing chef. So all the details are thought of to be able to show Big Table Care in a tangible way to folks that will hopefully either, be, there already are care recipients, some of them at the table, but others are just those working in the industry and it helps them get to know Big Table. Big Table Care is unique in the fact that we are the only nonprofit in the country that actually does relational care for the restaurant industry and for hotels. That's really what sets us apart is that we include relational care as part of our resources to help change people's lives. I wasn't feeling great about anything. I wasn't feeling great about life. And I, I went to my boss and I'm like, I don't like, it's not even like I'm wanting to quit. I just, I'm not wanting to do like any of this stuff right now. Like I just want to go home and sleep the next few weeks. Luke was in a bad spot. There wasn't much life behind him, he had this like cloud over him. I, I suffer from uh, ADHD, bipolar disorder, autism. I have problems with anxiety too. And I always like to say like, the hospitality industry, it is fulfilling. There's gonna be good days, bad days, but it, it can be very lonely. So to have an outlet for him just to even express something as simple as, this is the art that I'm working on, it made such an impact on his life. From there, we, we got to know each other, we got to build some trust and really start diving into the deeper roots of kind of what was going on in his life. What became really apparent was he didn't have people in his life that showed interest. Um, we spent a lot of our first sessions together talking about how he felt abandoned by his friends and he would put all this work into these uh, friendships that he was trying to maintain and still felt left alone, isolated. Really, it was just reassuring him that I was there for him and I didn't know what care was going to look like. It was about building that humanity piece back up. It's about giving somebody hope to want to share those things that are exciting in their life. I've, I've, I've always had difficulties with birthdays. I had a really rough kind of childhood. The fact that, again, in his life, there's some abandonment stuff and, and nobody reached out to him to say happy birthday, it, it crushed him. That was kind of my aha moment of like a way that I can support Luke. Chris and 
a big table group. They had gotten me this big trunk full of presents and it was like a bunch of like really important stuff we were needing for like our house. It was, it was just really nice. It was this, it really was a big surprise. And they open up the trunk and it's just filled with the brim with all these presents. And I, I hadn't really had that. And it was really nice. You can't fake raw emotion. Um, it was very clear how impactful that was. It wasn't necessarily about the items. Um, in fact, they were all wrapped. They didn't even know what they were until later on. It was the fact that we cared enough to do something like this. All you have to do sometimes is listen. We exist to see the lives of those working in this industry transformed. We can't do that transformation on our own. Uh, but what a privilege to get to be present with them, walk alongside them as they say, I want my life to be different. Uh, there's nothing better. Good morning. I want to just start with a little scripture. This is actually from the message, and it's a little further than where y'all. Big table Matthew. exists to care. Um, it's Matthew 25, 34 through 40. <laughs> then the king will say to those on his right, enter you who are blessed by my father. Take what's coming to you in this kingdom. It's been ready for you since the world's foundation, and here's why. I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was homeless and you gave me a room. I was shivering and you gave me clothes. I was sick and you stopped to visit. I was in prison and you came to me. Then those sheep are going to say, Master, what are you talking about? When did we ever see you hungry and feed you? Thirsty and give you a drink? And when did we ever see you sick or in prison and come to you? Then the king will say, I'm telling the solemn truth. Whenever you did one of these things to someone overlooked or ignored, that was me. You did it to me. The highest concentration of need is hidden behind the smiles of those working in hotels and restaurants. And Big Table cares for them. That's our why. Our founder, Kevin Finch, who was on the video, is actually an ordained pastor. He started Big Table in 2009 in Spokane, Washington. Nashville's an expansion city that opened three years ago in 2021. For about five years before he started Big Table, he'd been moonlighting as a local restaurant food critic in the Spokane area. He loved food, he loved to write, and it was just so fun to get paid to go try things. But as he began to spend so much intentional time in restaurants, he learned two significant things. These businesses had a collection of need on their staffs, and many of these folks were not interested in knowing a pastor. They were fascinated by the food critic, but once they found out his day job, he would joke he could clear a table like that. <laughs> the harsh reality is that this industry in general has had negative experiences with self-identified Christian patrons that become applied to all. For example, someone prays before a meal and then doesn't tip. Or a family comes for Sunday lunch dressed for church and behaves dismissive, dismissively or rudely to their server. But worst of all, there was a time, and according to Google, you can still order versions of these, sadly, where people would leave a gospel track that looked like money, and you, but not leave a tip, and you turn it over and it would just be about Jesus but the server going to it thinks they're going to pick up money. And I think it would say like, oh, here's the real riches. Okay. <laughs> but that actually is not very kingdom minded and not a good look for the kingdom, in my opinion, if it's not accompanied with a very generous tip that is more than would be expected. So all that to say, you could see why there are negative stereotypes associated with Christians that exist in the hospitality industry. The other reality is the industry does attract highly creative people who find nine to five jobs and routines a little bit stifling. And so similar to the arts, they're all, it's often primarily gig work with peaks and valleys on when they're getting paid, no benefits, no sick pay. 
Many creatives struggle at times with organized religion and black and white thinking, or they feel judged by how others look at them for how they look, dress, or express themselves. And I just lay this foundation to paint a picture of an industry that is filled with many that would qualify economically as the least of these, but because they have a job, they don't aren't seen. We don't think about it because they're working. But Big Table exists to care financially, but more importantly, relationally through coaching and mentoring to help these hardworking folks stabilize when they experience circumstances that, that impact their ability to be self-sufficient. We use a referral model, meaning a boss, coworker, or friend can refer someone online. And unlike a hotline model where you call on behalf of yourself and have to prove how bad you are to get help, this is a referral that is being put in by someone else who sees need. And what that has done is it actually helps to eliminate the people that are working the system that are just kind of going after everything and not necessarily wanting to change. And it also captures the people who never ask for help for themselves. So our primary impact areas, which were mentioned on the video, fall into the buckets of housing stability, job readiness, which includes transportation and child care issues, medical and dental needs, mental and spiritual health, and addiction recovery support. Look at Luke on the video. His initial referral was actually centered on mental health challenges, and he kind of talked about that. But as our care coordinator, Chris, met with him multiple times just to get to know him and spend time with him, he learned that because of his limited income, Luke often ate most of his meals at the hot chicken place where he worked. And he wasn't feeling so good from doing that. And so Chris helped him get a physical at a partner clinic. Um, took him grocery shopping to buy food to teach him kind of how to cook at home and eat a little bit healthier. And that was when the idea came to do what we refer to as a care campaign, to stock his home with the kitchen items needed to be able to cook well, but then also the glass things to take food, maybe if you want to eat during the day, a little bit healthier. And so what a care campaign is, is when we create an Amazon wish list and share it with our supporters so they can purchase items off of it to help us care for someone. And Luke worked with Chris to choose items listed on Amazon. And after a couple of weeks, we big table then purchased anything that hadn't been hadn't been bought yet. And we're beginning to think through how we were going to give it to Luke and his now wife, June, that you saw in the video. But during the actual campaign, as we were gathering um, these items, Chris heard about Luke's birthday disappointment. And so then we shifted to presenting the care campaign items that we already had to a birthday themed way of giving them to him. The team took him in June to breakfast and then out to the decorated car that y'all saw in the video. So what's significant about this particular story and truly most of Big Table's care relationships is the nuance around it. When you know someone and are curious about them, you care differently for them. We already knew that Luke needed to be able to cook from home, but Chris truly heard his heart around his loneliness and his birthday disappointment. So part of Big Table's mission is to help hospitality patrons like y'all see the industry and to be able to serve you. You might not go as deep with your server as Chris has gone with Luke, but people do give clues about things that impact them in life as you spend time with them, just if they're coming over the table for every few minutes. This industry aims to be unseen to improve the guest experience. So it takes practice to notice the individuals as real people with real lives. And one of the tools for helping people like all of us to see this industry are our unexpected 20 envelopes. Our founder thought of these and we recently actually got them trademarked, which feels kind of cool, <laughs> but it's a really simple concept. You put a $20 bill in the envelope and when you're at a restaurant or a hotel, you look for the person who's unseen. It's not a tip, it's not for your server. So maybe it's the person who is just a younger server who's just filling waters and clearing the table. Maybe it's somebody who is managing all the DoorDash orders. Maybe, but doesn't have a table themselves. Or 
maybe it's the front desk person at a hotel when the line is long or there's something going wrong. Just having to identify someone who seems unseen is a counterintuitive experience. My favorite way to use a U20 is to tell my server at the end of the meal that we plan to tip very well, which means you have to tip over $20, <laughs> even if it's just a little bit, and then give this with a 20 in it to the server and ask him or her to give this to the person having kind of the hardest day or week. Primarily, maybe someone back of house who doesn't get tips. Their eyes light up when they are offered a way to care for coworkers. Because many of these folks don't have the means to support each other financially, they're all struggling, but they know of each other's needs. And so it's very empowering for them. What I've brought to all of it all is an unexpected 20 for every family, if you'd like that, to be able to use that somewhere in the community, as well as a one pager on how to care while eating and sleeping. <laughs> and it basically just gives you ideas on how to press into the restaurant and hospitality industry in a way that is life-giving. Going back to the passage in Matthew, I believe that having eyes to see those around us in need is of the Lord. Whenever you did one of these things to someone overlooked or ignored, that was me you did it. You did it to me, is what it says. You can feel certain that when you're in a restaurant or a hotel that someone is struggling to make ends meet while also possibly juggling family or personal issues as well. Seeing the dignity in others starts with intentionally looking for the least of these. They are scattered all around us, hidden in plain sight. So notice who God puts in your path and be curious. Big Table believes it's the support of relationship, not just the financial help that makes a difference and change people's lives. But financial help is important as well. But relationships were the foundation of Jesus's ministry as well. And it all starts with seeing the unseen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. As we listen to your word, help us know, O oh God, your presence. Let our hearts and minds be stirred. Nourish us with sacred story till we claim it as our own. Teach us through this holy banquet. How to make love's victory known. Turn our worship into witness in the sacrament of life. Send us forth to love and serve you, bringing peace where there is strife. Give us Christ, your great compassion, to forgive as you forgave, we be still behold your image in the world you died to save. Gracious Spirit, help us solve it, help our guests to share that.
let us confess the faith of our baptism and the faith of the church. I, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Almighty creator of, of heaven, heaven and earth. earth. I, I believe, believe in Jesus Christ, Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the, On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. O oh, wise one, your wisdom has been present in this world since its beginning. Pour out your wisdom into the hearts of the whole church, especially the newly baptized, lay leaders, deacons, pastors, and bishops. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for our leaders, Joe and Bill, for our bishops, Elizabeth and Kevin, for Christ Lutheran Church in Clarksville, for St. John's Lutheran Church in Augsburg, Germany, lunches for learning, Shower up and the well. Merciful God, receive our, our prayer. prayer. <clears throat> Compassionate God, help government leaders of this world unite for peace and justice. Humble all who hold authority. That power is directed toward a more just society. Merciful God, receive our, our prayer. prayer. We remember any who are sick or suffering families in our community who endure hunger, those who seek asylum or citizenship, and our beloved for whom death is near. Heal those who are sick, especially. We ask a special blessing on all those who are faced with making difficult decisions and that they will can have the resolve to hold to that, re that decision. For those who are born way too early, for those who are dealing with ongoing medical issues and they're not able to um, find a resolution for it. We also pray for those who are caring for the ones that they love, for those who are dealing with um, fading memories and mental capacities. We pray for those who are struggling with a long recovery process such as Gabby and for all of those who are grieving and for those who are recovering from transplants. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Bread of life from heaven, you feed us. Fill all who hunger with needed nutrition and open our hearts to eliminate hunger in this world. May we see a day when all are fed. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. O oh, wisdom of truth, help us to understand your will for the church. Be with congregations experiencing transition, redevelopment, and the exciting yet frightening path of newness. May your wisdom be found at every step. Merciful God, receive, receive our prayer. Redeeming God, we give you thanks for the lives and witness of your saints now departed. Bring your beloved into eternal glory, opening wide the gates to the heavenly banquet. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us share the peace of the Lord with one another. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us into the path of love and light. In every age, you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all hum humanity. The cry of the poor has become our own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and broke systems. On the night in which you, of his betrayal and arrest, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took bread gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his followers saying, share this bread among you. This is my body, which will be broken for justice. Do this for the remembrance of me. And when supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to his disciples saying, share this wine among you. This is my blood, which will be shed for liberation. Do this to remember me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, spirit of freedom. Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, spirit of freedom. Join our prayers and praise with your prophets and martyrs of every age that rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection, we might live in the freedom and hope of your son through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, <clears throat> be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are his now and forever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come. All people are celebrated at Christ's table. You may be seated. And for those of you who are joining us via Zoom, this is the bread of life for all who hunger and the cup of compassion for a broken world. Ladies. 
lightness of the body of Christ for you. Diana, the body of Christ. Like, this is the cup of compassion. Diana, the cup of compassion.
Let us pray together. Jesus, bread of life, gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us. So I guess it wasn't a good idea to include that. Um, um, those of you who are in the room, if you would take the black friendship pad found on this side of the room, fill out the information that's requested and then send it all the way across to the other side. We would appreciate that. Um, okay, so who wants to join me up here in the front for a picture? Here we go. Good. Don't leave me hanging up here all by myself. Okay. Okay. Oh, we got more coming, John. Oh, yeah. Walk. Yeah. We always like it when you walk up here. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Great. All right. Thank you. And please walk back to your seats. Yeah. Wonderful. So we invite you to post that on your favorite form of social media as a witness that on this Sunday morning, you could have chosen to do a whole lot of things that you chose to be at church and to hear Jen speak to us. So just as a witness, feel free to post that. And besides posting your picture, what's your takeaway from today? Be a good tipper. Yes, yes. And I, I love that line you said about how... Um, those in the service industry are hurting behind the smiles that they show us and how um, I hadn't really thought about that, how they, you know, come to us to our table smiling and gracious. And there could just be a whole plethora of things happening in the background of their lives. And I hope you'll be sure and take advantage of the envelopes that Jen has for us. So with that, um, with posting your picture, always also post a little something else that you learned today about being in uh, worship. So, so-and-sos, are we meeting Friday? Are we going to do that? Okay, so we're on for Friday at 9 o'clock here at the church. And so we'll, we're will we going to be back at it, assembling more quilts that we put together. So we did about 100 in this last year. That's awesome. So congratulations to all of you. We now have the notebooks and the crayons that we need. Yes. And I think we'll be able to surpass our goal of 125 school kids. So on August the 18th, um, children, you're invited to bring your backpack for a blessing. And then because we're blessed to be a blessing, after worship, we're going to assemble all of these school kits, we'll, which will then go to Lutheran World Relief, and they'll get shipped to hot spots all around the world where students' educations are being interrupted due to climate change, due to strife and conflict, due to poverty, just a whole host of reasons. So congrats to y'all of that and be sure and come back on the 18th. We have a busy day packing all of those. The blessing of the backpacks, as I said, will be during worship on August the 18th. And this includes young students, but it also includes older ones. So if you're going back to school and it also includes our staff and our educators. So if you're a teacher, if you're a cafeteria worker, be sure and bring, if it's not your backpack, then the special shoes that you wear to be able to stand all day, whatever it is, we'll bless anything. So just bring it. Um, I have brought uh, several items that I put on the counter next to the refrigerator in the back. So if you would please pick those up. Um, what's next? Oh, somebody, I came to church today and there's been a landscaping genie just did all kinds of work on the yard. So I'm not sure who that was, but anybody want to take credit for it? Well, thank you. Whoever it was, we're grateful. <laughs> so um, that front flower bed was totally weeded and it's been really hot lately. So I'm really thankful for the work that got done there. And thank you, Jen, for coming. We're very blessed to have you. <clears throat> Um, are there any other announcements for the good of the congregation? Would you please stand for our blessing? The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning 
on the everlasting arms Water blessedness, water peace is mine Leaning on the everlasting arms Leaning, leaning Safe and secure from all the lungs Leaning, leaning Leaning on the everlasting arms To walk in this pilgrim way Leaning on the everlasting arms Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day Leaning on the everlasting arms Leaning, leaning Safe and secure from all alarms Leaning Everlasting arms What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms I have blessed peace with my Lord so near Everlasting arms Leaning, leaning Safe and secure from all alarms Leaning, leaning Leaning on the everlasting arms in peace to love and serve God. We will cross barriers and build friendships.